Hello folks and welcome back to Whiskey Wars. My name is Sean and tonight we'll be reviewing the most famous brand of American whiskey on the planet's Barrel Proof. That's right, we're going to review Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. Let's get into it. Okay, here it is, Jack Daniels Single Barrel Barrel Proof. Certainly a brand that most people are familiar with, but not everyone is familiar with this bottle. Although I would say many whiskey enthusiasts are. So this is a far cry away from old number seven. Before we get into this bottle specifically, let's first do a quick rundown of Jack Daniels, the brand, the man, and how we got to where we are. So Jack Daniels, the man. He unfortunately loses both of his parents at a young age he moves to li live with his uncle. His uncle, unfortunately, uh, of course at that time period, he was one of many slave owners. But nonetheless, a slave of Jack Daniels' uncle was Nearest Green, or some of you may know him as Uncle Nearest, which is another whiskey brand that we will eventually get to. And Uncle Nearest, Nearest Green, teaches Jack Daniels everything he would come to know about making whiskey, including the now famous Lincoln County process. Yes, the whole charcoal melt thing, you can thank Nearest Green for that. So, that is the history of how we got to where we are. Of course, there's a lot more to that, which uh, you should look up because the history of Jack Daniels is pretty interesting. But nonetheless, here is the bottle we have today, the barrel proof option from Jack Daniels. And again, as I said earlier, this is nothing at all like old number seven. I'm not a fan of old number seven, but I do like this bottle. I won't say how much until we get to the end of this review. But let's get this thing poured and uh, see what it's all about. Let me first say that this is just a gorgeous bottle in my opinion. I mean, look at this guy. Look at the squatty square bottle there. Nice gold label. Uh, I like uh, I like it I like it I like it it's nice uh, and also uh, for those that really want to know all you whiskey nerds out there this is barrel number a long number 21 dash 03441 bottling date is 41921 so if you have a bottle similar to that maybe you can compare it home either way this is a single barrel so they do vary like all single barrels do. But let's see what this one has to offer. Let's first get into the nose here. And so right away, you know this is a brown Foreman product, but you also know that there's something distinctly different about it. So you're getting that banana note as you would expect on a brown Foreman product. But then there's also this very strong grape note and there's certainly a nuttiness to it. it it's kind of uh, coming across as like uh, peanut butter and grape jelly on the nose uh, with also a hint of banana. Not so much a breadiness though, so not like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Then there's also a very nice toasted oak note, uh, nice pepper notes in there, certainly a caramel, a fairly nice brown sugar. There's that Tennessee whiskey funk going on that kind of uh, earthy dirtiness that you kind of, I suppose you get from the charcoal, I would assume. And uh, also there's kind of a, an anise note as well as maybe a little clove going on in there. There's also like a coffee note showing up as well as maybe even like a chocolate note. Now let's get into the taste though. Here we go, first sip. You know, this is a great example of why people love barrel proofs, because of the experience that a barrel proof is. So you start out with very kind of standard bourbon notes. So you get kind of pepper, uh, caramel, brown sugar right up front, just kind of a general sweetness. There is some heat there because this guy is, let's see, 130.9 proof, for, so certainly not low proof by any means. And then, once you kind of get over that heat and that kind of spice and then the caramel brown sugar, then as it gets kind of mid palate, then the flavors just explode into this. It's just exactly like we smell on the nose. 
just peanut butter and grape jelly. It's so sweet. Uh, there's that great kind of thickness, almost like you can feel the peanut butter thickness in there as well as the, that kind of jelly sweet kind of syrupy thickness going on as well. Uh, just excellent. And then there's the that, that kind of toasted oak note mixing in there. There's that hint of banana. It's not real strong. It's not nearly as strong as say an Old Forester product. And then lots and lots of barrel spices. So your cinnamon, your black pepper, that's certainly in there. A little bit of charred notes going on in there, but not overwhelming by any means. So certainly a great first sip. Let's go ahead and get into our second sip here and see what we can get on the finish. Here we go. Man, you know, even the finish is quite a ride. So it kind of starts with that grape peanut butter note, a uh, lot more spicy than it is mid palate, a lot more of those barrel spices coming through. And then it kind of gets into these more deeper charred oak notes. There's a little like hint of coffee showing up there. Darker chocolate showing up, definitely kind of some sweet tobacco in there. And then as it, it as it's all the way down your throat, kind of the finish is starting to kind of taper off. Then you just get this punch of caramel, kind of butterscotch, and then the, the spice kind of comes back around. There's the cinnamon just kind of takes over and it becomes this really sweet cinnamon note that kind of finishes. One thing though, there is that you know, quintessential Jack Daniels kind of Tennessee whiskey funk going on there. You know, it's kind of like this earthy, charred, I've never chewed on charcoal, but I have to imagine that's what you're picking up. Those kind of earthy, muddy tones. Now, I will say though, it's a lot more subdued in this compared to say, the old number seven. Uh, it, it's, the other notes are much more prominent. It, it's certainly there, you pick it up, uh, you know, it, it's kind of quintessential to Jack Daniels, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. It kind of adds to the experience. You still know you're drinking a Jack, but it's a completely different experience from the old number seven. So now time to rate this guy. Um, you know, I have to say I have enjoyed this bottle so far. As you can see, I've had a few sips out of this already. Uh, been very enjoyable. So this is around a $70 bottle, sometimes 75. I have seen it as low as 65, but it's kind of rare to see it at that price point. Although I know that prices are different depending on where you are in the States or otherwise. I don't know what prices would be like internationally, but if you guys are seeing this internationally, then let me know what prices you guys are seeing. But to the score. So at $70, how does this compete? So, you know, when you get up into the $70 price point, then you're competing with a lot of bottles, a lot of big hitters for sure. Uh, you know, you're talking, you're in Stag Junior range, if you can find that at MSRP. Uh, you're in the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof range. Uh, you know, all the, the Makers 46, you got Old Forester 1920 at lower than this. So there's a lot of strong competition, plus all the other barrel proof options that are out there now, which I mean, almost every company has a barrel proof option now. So there's tons and tons of barrel proof options. Now, as for the score, so 70 bucks, I'm gonna say it's an 8.2. Not as good as some in that price range, but certainly a standout, well above average and certainly a buy for sure. So folks, if you have enjoyed this review and it helps you in your shopping, please hit that like button. Also folks, here is more reviews from us. There's some other barrel proofs in there as well. And here is the subscribe button. And until next time folks, just remember, you can never have too much good whiskey.